Okay, so in this video, the first part, in the first part, we'll discuss um, an example of quick sort, and in the next video, we'll discuss the code that is given in the lecture slide. So quick sort is again a divide and conquer algorithm, uh, where the larger problem is divided into smaller problems, and uh, smaller problems are solved recursively. However, there is no need for merging the solutions of the smaller problems. And that's the main difference of quicksort. As we have discussed in the lecture, the even though the worst case complexity of quicksort is order of n square, it actually behaves much better in practice. And that's the main reason behind that is that there is no merge step, only the divide step. So what is the magic behind it? The idea is the following. Okay, let's start with some uh, numbers and we'll illustrate through these numbers. Let us say, this is the input. Now in quicksort, what is done at every divide step is the following. First, we choose a so-called pivot element, and there is no real good choice of the pivot element, uh, considering that the array, the input array is completely unsorted. So for simplicity, we'll choose the pivot element as the last element of the array. Now, the main aim in quicksort is to place the pivot element correctly in the array. Place the pivot correctly in the array. What I mean correctly is that when we choose the pivot element, we, we make sure at every divide step that the position of the pivot element is its final position in the sorted array. That is, we don't need to change it once we place it correctly. So that's the real insight and real trick behind the quicksort algorithm. So how is it done? What we do basically is to divide the array into two parts. So I'll draw the array here again. And what you do is you place all the elements that are smaller than the pivot element to the left side of the array. So for example, I'll not change their order because in the actual algorithm, their order is not changed. So what are the smallest elements uh, which are uh, smaller than the pivot element? We go and check 12. No, 12 is not um, smaller than the pivot element 11. So 12 is brought in this side of the array. Two, yes, two is smaller than the pivot element. Three, similarly, one, 14 is not smaller than the pivot element. So 14 goes there. And finally, uh, not finally, four is smaller than the pivot element. Four comes here. Similarly, eight is smaller than the pivot element. So eight comes here. So you can see now that the array has been divided into two parts. The right part, the elements 14 and 12, these two are greater than 11. And all the elements here, the five elements uh, to the left side of the array, are all smaller than 11. And 11 goes here. Now, this is the point I was mentioning earlier, that the whole idea is to place the pivot element accurately or correctly in the array so that we will never need to change the position of the pivot element anymore. Why is that correct? Because if you look at uh, the way the problem has been divided into two parts, uh, no matter no matter what happens uh, in this part of the array, the position of 11 is not going to change. And no matter what happens in this part of the array, the position of 11 is not going to change again. So at every divide step, we are positioning one of the elements correctly in the array. And this continues recursively. So what we do is now we have to again choose a pivot element for the left side of the array. And um, 
we have to do the same thing as we did before. And you see the problem here, if I now compare all the other elements with eight, then really every other element like two, three, one, and four, sorry, this is one, and this is four. They are all in their correct position, or rather their position doesn't change. So by choosing the last element of the array, remember now for us, the array is this part, the left array, and the right array is this part. So we didn't do anything much. The array remained like this, two, three, one, four. Similarly, if I choose 12 as the pivot element, then what we have to do is, uh, for this side of the array, then what we have to do is uh, simply place all the elements which are less than 12 to the left side and all the elements that are greater than 12 to the right side. So what will happen is, basically, if I draw this part of the array, then I'll have 12 here and 14 here because this element 14 is greater than 12, so it has gone to the right side, but 12 hasn't changed its position. Now, again, notice the following. Okay, what we can do is we can write 11 in the middle because 11's position is not going to change. Similarly, we have placed four and 12 in their correct positions. So you can see after two, divide steps, we have fixed the final positions of three of the elements. And this process continues. So I now divide this part of the array and this part of the array, uh, which is just a single element. So 14, nothing we can do or nothing needs to be done for 14. For here, I choose one as the pivot element and everything that is uh, smaller than one, I put to the left side of the array. Nothing is smaller than one, so it goes here, and two and three are here. So you can see again that one and 14, I can draw 14 here separately, have been placed correctly again. And finally, two and three, if I choose three as the pivot element, I have already two in the correct position. So hence you can see at the end, if I consider all the pivot elements that I have placed correctly and write them in the array, I get this array. I think I missed um, eight somewhere. So eight should be here and so here it should be 8, 11, 12, 14. So we have got the array sorted. Now why, why is this, uh, when can this go wrong? Uh, it will not go wrong in, in the sense of uh, the final output, you will always get the sorted output. However, it may go wrong in terms of how deep is the recursion or how deep you have to go for dividing the problem. We have already seen the example of that, that when we chose, for example, eight as the pivot element, then we couldn't do anything much. The right side of eight was completely empty and the left side had all these uh, elements. Similarly, when we chose four as the pivot element, we had a similar situations. So these are bad cases for the quick sort algorithm. Uh, the good case would be when by choosing the pivot element, you can have a balanced partition of the array into a left and right side so that both are of similar size. So that is why if you have bad luck and your pivot element can't really separate the array into equal, roughly equal parts, then the depth of the recursion will be order of n. And remember, at every step, 
you are doing order of n work because to separate the array into two parts, left and right, you have to compare the pivot with all the other elements. And that you have to add up for every part of the array that we are, uh, we are computing. So basically, the, if the recursion depth is n and you are doing n work at every step, then the quick sort algorithm has a complexity of order of n square. However, if your choice of the pivot element is good, then you'll get balanced partitions and the depth of the recursion will be order of log n, quite similar to March sort. And then you can have an, on an average, a running time of order of n log n or something in less than order of n squared. So that is the example of quicksort. And in the next video, we'll examine the code based on this discussion.